Is Titano Finance legit or not? These are my thoughts, these are my opinions, but I'm going to come with facts right to your face as to why I'm personally not going to be partaking in being a degenerate inside of Titano Finance. So with that being said, welcome back. Happy New Year to all Hidden Gem Network fam. Uh, and let's just get right into it. So I have a lot of notes that I wanna cover here because there's a lot of things that we need to go over. So first thing is first, I'm gonna get right into it. Scam or not a scam, I don't know. Just like every other thing that I've ever partaken in or everything that I've covered, I make it very explicit and say that I don't know whether or not these uh, particular projects can be scams. Can they be scams? Yeah, absolutely. Is there a higher percentage chance, probability of it being a scam versus not being a scam? Absolutely, like 100% look at Ring Node. I mean, well, Ring Node's not a scam, whatever. So uh, again, let's just, let's just get this out of the way. I'm going to present what I found, what I've seen, my thoughts and opinions, and let you make your own decision. So with all that being said, I actually want to dive into something that I started to take notice of just from the past you know, month and a half, two months that I've been going out there and just doing a bunch of research and participating in all these uh, reserve protocol, reserve currency protocols and all these nodes. And again, I really want to dive into something really important and check this out, okay? So I started to notice something really interesting when it came down to the market caps, now again, this excludes Olympus Dow, this excludes uh, Wonderland, and there's a reason being is because first off, OHM, Ohm has first mover advantage and a really strong um, base of participants, and Wonderland has probably the best, the most strong community I've ever seen. However, I started to take note of what's most important is the market cap of these projects when they typically start to implode. Now, it's interesting to see where these projects start to just literally just completely start to fall off and just everybody starts panicking out of them. And I'm starting to notice something and one, the biggest reason I would say personally, uh, well, this is actually the second biggest reason. We'll get to the other biggest reason, number one, in just a few minutes. But this is the second biggest reason is because I believe that what the project does, what the protocol is doing in comparison to the market cap, it's overvalued. It's overvalued for, even though it's at 168 million market cap, it's overvalued. Now, now, let me just break this down for you, okay? So I want you to take a look at Jade and we're gonna take a look at the market cap and for the record, anywhere from 160 to 220, $230 million, it seems to be the peak of these DAOs, of these projects in, in this particular sector of DeFi before they just start to completely implode on themselves. So if we take a look at Jade, right, we can see the market cap over here was around 200 mil. And let's just go 100 and, let's see, 180 million. And then it just took a nosedive. Now we're taking a look at Strong as well. So a lot of people are talking about Strong right now. And we can see if we hover over Strong, the market cap's 165 million. And what happens here? Well, we just kind of start to slowly, slowly implode. And again, Strong is a is a node-based project. The market cap's at 81 million now. But let me just reinforce this. Jade is also at 38 million when it used to be at like 200, even 150 million or so. Metaverse Pro as well. Um, it's at 8.3 million. Now here's, here's what I'm gonna uh, say about Metaverse Pro because I don't think it has a market cap yet. It doesn't have um, a factual market cap here. Now here's what I will say is that the, the projects that you wanna be looking out for that will potentially make the most, the most income, the most money for you is those that have a really low market cap with a huge potential to gain a lot of momentum in regards to the, uh, the, the community around it. So if you see a project that is, that is brand new, low market cap, and the price is, you know, the price is still somewhat sustainable, and again, if it looks like a good project, legitimate project, you check it all out, then that would be what I would like to get into because I'll have the first mover advantage in comparison to something like uh, Titano where all of the all of the community, all the hype is already here. This market cap and mark my words, I'm telling you, and it's at 183 now, it's gonna go 200, maybe 230, 250. I don't see it going to 300, to 300 million market cap. It's going to go ahead and implode on itself. The people that are getting in now, it, it, when it's rallying, you guys are gonna get smoked. You guys are gonna get wrecked. You're gonna get destroyed. 
You're providing liquidity. You are liquidity. So I'm not saying it's a scam. I'm not saying it's a scam. I'm not saying, you know, to, to not invest, do whatever you want. I'm just saying be very cautious with getting into any project during its all time high. So again, just kind of keep that in mind. It's something that I started to take um, you know, notice of is the market caps and where they tend to you know, kind of just tether off, no pun intended. So again, that's what I wanted to cover first. And now the other thing I wanted to go ahead and cover is their CERTIC audit. Now, I really like the fact that they're going ahead and getting a CERTIC audit. So where's this over here? So here we go. So CERTIC is one of the best auditing firms for smart contracts in the world. And again, it's, it's very, it's very good. It's a great sign to show, uh, to, to allow Certic or a, a reputable auditing firm to come in and audit your smart contracts. It just says, it's basically like, Hey, um, you know, we're, we're, open and ready to share whatever it is. So you're going to want to pay very close attention to what the findings are. The audit is 85% done and you know, that's, it is what it is. Now, my biggest concern as to why I'm personally not getting involved here. And you know me, I'm, I'm a degenerate when it comes down to DeFi, right? I'll just put my money into anything and see how it goes as a case study. So you all can watch at the same time. Now, what really, listen, the number one thing that threw me off about, about this particular project is the fixed APY. Now I just can't, I can't wrap my head around a fixed APY at 102,483%. So again, it's fixed, like meaning that everybody has the same exact APY. So if we remove the APY aspect, right, it just basically uh, and I hate to say, I hate to say this, but if we remove the APY, what makes me and you different? What makes you and everybody else investing different? We're all earning the same APY, right? So everything is consistent. If we remove the APY, what does this become? Seriously, what does this become? There's no Oracle that's determining the APYs, right? So uh, like legitimately think to yourself for a second, we remove the APY, Cause that's their, that's their, you know, their ploy, right? Is the highest fixed APY. I put money in first. Let's remove the APY here. Okay. I put money in first it auto compounds. And the way that my, I get more money is that if you come in and you put more and you buy, you know, uh, Titano, right. Or whatever their native token is, you go ahead and stake it. Um, that's going to inevitably drive the price up because you had to buy the token at a higher price. Again, APY is out of the question here. So great. If I were to go ahead and just withdraw what I put in, but you bought at a higher price, I can sell at that higher price because somebody else is going to come in and purchase it as well after you theoretically. So what is, what is that called? What like legitimately, what is that called? Everybody is so fixated on the 102,000% fixed APY that if we remove that aspect, first off, it's not sustainable. Second, if you were to remove it completely, what does that make it? I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys tell me what that makes this particular project in the comments down below. Like think about it logically here. If you remove the APY aspect from here, it, everybody has the same thing. So where's the value coming from? So great. I'm going to let you come up with your own uh, opinions on this. And you tell me what this in your head, logically speaking becomes if we were to move the APY aspect out of this. So I'm going to, I'm just going to leave that there. And just so you know, APYs, uh, or any type of yields in the DeFi space are all determined by an Oracle An Oracle can be something like chain link. Or in this case, if you look at Olympus Dow, it's TWAP, right? So it's, we have now finished, uh, sales and TWAP plus some additional help, whatever you get the idea. So TWAP, the Oracle, if we take a look, okay, if we take a look at TWAP Oracle, we can see right over here that it's literally a protocol comparing TWAP Oracles and Chainlink. So these are different protocols, different, um, different Oracles that is being used on, in this case, Olympus Dow. So after looking at this, just so you know, a fixed APY, um, <laughs> I, I just still can't wrap my head around this because a fixed APY, it doesn't make sense. It's not an APY then. It's just a income multiplier. It's just a fancy way for marketing. 
So I, I, I just can't wrap my head around the fact that they're calling it an APY because it's not an APY. All it's doing is just multiplying what seems to be more money that you put in. So if there was an oracle to determine, and that's why numbers fluctuate with, even Jade had, uh, you know, had, their, um, uh, had their APYs fluctuating, right? So an oracle determines the fluctuations in those numbers based on how many people are staking in the pool. This, it, this doesn't fluctuate. It, it's just you get what you get, whether you buy down here or whether you buy up here, thus going to leave a lot of people burned. So I, for one, am not buying, not because I don't like money. Do I believe that people are gonna make a lot of money? Yeah, if you, if you bought at the bottom, absolutely. So that's, again, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna let your mind, your opinions do their own thinking. I don't wanna you know, kind of influence you, but the other thing that I also noticed is that it's really interesting, and I wanna call this out because I see so many projects doing this, okay? So when you see, uh, when you see something like this, we're number four on coin market cap trending page, or we're number one on Dex Tools trending section. Listen, I've been part of marketing teams for tokens for different projects. Number one, coin market cap, the number one spot on trending is $50,000 a day. If you wanna get number, I think it was number nine was 15 or $17,000 a day. The top 10 on trending, just so you know, they're pay to play. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, Dex tools, because they mentioned Dex tools. I've been in contact with the, um, the, the sales and marketing team at Dex tools, just, just so you're aware. Um, Dex tools is also pay to play in case you guys didn't know this. The crypto space is a big facade. And if you don't know that, now you know, because everything that you see, and uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with uh, pay to play, okay? It's just, if you try to, and I'm not saying Titano's doing this, I'm just saying other projects do this. If you angle it in a way that says, oh my goodness, we're trending on, on this platform, if we're trending on coin market cap, we're number one, yet you have negative 60% on your daily, um, on your daily uh, return. Right, right, yeah, it makes total sense. So like, if you take a look over here, you can see that uh, the top button, 18,000 per week, this right here, featured sponsor, 13,000 per week. So it's all pay to play. It's all pay to play. So if, if a project, and I'm not singling, singling out Titano, I just want you to understand and grasp this concept that these projects create a facade to make you think that they're trending and a lot of people are looking at them because what does that do? It rallies the current community they have to just keep on buying more. Because if in it, like psychologically speaking, as a holder, if you're like, oh my goodness, we're on trending. So many people are going to see, I want to buy more right now because I'll make more money because a bunch of people are going to come in. It's, it's a psychological play here. It's been done for years at this point. And again, I have these media decks. I have these, I have these pitch decks from YouTubers, from different platforms. I'm well aware at how the paid to play space works behind the scenes. And that's why I always find it so funny when when other projects are like, yeah, we're on trend. No, you paid to be on trending because if you were actually seeing some sort of momentum, you would go ahead and just watch. You want to pay very close attention. If you're ever going to watch how well the actual token or project is doing, watch the position, the ranking of the actual token on coin market cap if you're gonna do that. So for example, you can see rank number 3048 and now it's 3045, it's moving up. But if, it, if it's on trending tomorrow morning and it's at 3,500, how does that make sense? How does that make sense? You drop down hundreds of positions, but you're trending on number one? Come on, like nobody puts two and two together here. And, um, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm being negative here either. I'm just calling out stuff that a lot of people are so unaware about that it's, it's actually kind of sad because people get duped into this all the time. Don't be mesmerized by this facade of, hey, we're, we're trending on this platform and that platform, and hey, this YouTuber made a video about us. It's all paid to play. The crypto space is all paid to play. Everybody has a price. Now, the last thing I'm gonna end off on is this, Titan, Titano is following, Titano, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's interesting because it's following the same pattern. And again, I don't want you to th think that I'm calling this a scam or anything of the source. It's following the same pattern as Jade, <laughs> all right? It's literally following the same exact pattern as Jade, the same exact hype uh, pattern as Jade. However, I'm not saying it, you know it's a scam. If it is, then 
it sucks, but it is what it is. It's following the same thing. Why do I say that? Because the only thing they're marketing is increase in holders, burning money, increase in holders, trending. What are they doing? Because as far as I'm aware, what interests me is their promise for the Titano Play, P-L-A-Y, is the new Titano tap uh, base project that allows Titano token holders to generate even more rewards. <sighs> oh boy. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna let you make your own decision on this. That was my opinion, why I'm not getting into it. Those are all the factors that I looked at and I'm becoming a lot more wiser on where I decide to be a degenerate. And in this case, this, this one just isn't for me, but hey, if it's for you, then great. If you're in it, great. If you're really mad at me right now because it seems like I'm knocking the, this project, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I mean, there's nothing that I can really say, but those are the facts that I'm presenting. If you wanna rebuttal any, then go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll always make an updated video as well. But again, just because something looks great on the outside isn't always necessarily what's happening behind the scenes or the inside. So again, Gem Hunters, I'll catch you soon. Have a great day.